So uh, I know my heart joins your heart in days like today where we collectively as a body um, give voice to our pain, whether it is as uh, close as yesterday's breath or many, many years before, uh, there's something about grief that often, if not always, remains alive and active in us when we might think that it is rigid or static or dead. In the same way, I've found our saints' stories are as dynamic and even surprising. I was at a, an awards banquet this week with um, a few uh, clergy friends of mine celebrating somebody that we, uh, we collectively knew. And uh, Betsy, one of my uh, closest colleagues, she was sharing with me uh, a little piece about uh, she and her husband were moving to North Carolina, and so they were going through a lot of her father's things. Her father had passed many years ago, and she told me with just life and excitement about the fact that she had discovered in the midst of throwing away so many things, this pack of letters that was written by her father to her mother whenever they were just young things. And you might think, oh, letters, great. Well, the thing was, uh, Betsy's father was kind of a, a stoic, very um, unemotional seeming person. And yet you open up these letters and it was like being transported into a different world and a completely different human being of passion and of love and expressed affection. It was just a beautiful thing to behold and at least for her broke open her understanding of her father beyond death in a whole new way. Maybe you've had those experiences too of the surprising ways that stories of those we cherish most are broken open. Whether it be something as simple as my discovery of my, my father years ago uh, selling bomb shelters whenever he was trying to make some extra cash as a school principal in the early 70s. It's just a funny, simple thing. But another part of the story or maybe you f might find someone that you cherish had experienced something profoundly difficult that you didn't know about. And it gave a whole new color and understanding to why they walked in the way that they did in the world for good or for ill. Think about the ways that you have learned about these stories of those you cherish in the midst of loss. Again, these stories are not static, but dynamic and moving and breathing and mostly, I would say, still impactful in your life and in mine if we allow them to be. On this day of remembrance, we draw uh, in inspiration from these stories. We find solace in these stories. And like the Beatitudes, there is a sense where these words are also not static and rigid pronouncements of if you do this, then this will happen. There's a sense where it has a whole different life and quality to it, the way that Jesus communicates these very intentional blessings imparted upon those who heard his voice. These Beatitudes, even in themselves, contained deep and vast surprises, reflecting a God who is, uh, whose very character is surprise in the same way. Now, these words, often they are misunderstood, and especially as we read these Beatitudes in the frame of grief, we might have one of two responses. One of them might be a little bit of offense, Right? So this sense of count yourselves as blessed in a state of blessing uh, when you're mourning. Well, when your mother has died or your friend has passed away, that is the farthest thing from our minds and hearts that we would want to believe. We're blessed because of that. Another emotion might be indifference. So seeing these beatitudes particularly in like the king james version and some of the other older translations that translate happy for blessing 
We might think that they're just a little too uh, innocuous or uh, not really having import on our lives or too distant from what reality really feels like. Whatever reaction you have, the one thing I hope that you can see today is that these words, even as they take up space on a page, actually open up empty space. Almost a chasm uh, that, uh, of emptiness, uh, of the not yet and the unrealized that we have the invitation to receive, to live in, and to watch uh, these spaces be filled. Jesus creates these in-between spaces as we hold long aches and memories in days like these. And even as we seek consolation, I don't know about you, but the grief process is and has been, for me, one that continues to come in waves and it seems as if it never ends. It changes quality, but never, ever ends. For that reality, for this chasm, uh, this empty place of not yet, um, that sometimes leaves us speechless, there is a blessing. And Jen Richardson speaks to this in uh, one way by saying, there are those who live in the spaces between our breathing, in corners of our vision, in the hallows of our bones, in the chambers of our very heart. Nowhere can they be touched, yet still how they move us, how they move in us, made from the tissue of memory like the veil between the worlds. Jesus uses this term of blessing not just to speak to a very real um, state of being in the now, but this verb is actually in the, this is your, uh, you're going to be smart today learning something, this verb is in the indicative mood. It is really a future tense verb that speaks not only to the now, but to the always and will be, right? They will be comforted. They will see God. Jesus highlights not only the good already, but uh, that which is granted for the future empty spaces that we fear. Those longings, those hungers that we know and we um, find them almost impossible to heal. So today, as we swim in and live these words that may not at first glance seem so appealing, you and I are invited to lean into uh, the road and the journey a little bit that often uh, in faith when one travels it, we find more truth than we knew, that mourning is sometimes better than the bottled up, closed off posture to life that keeps any of us pent up with resentment or anger or fear, rather than being open hearted, receptive, and grateful, even courageous. And in those ways, we will be truly comforted and at peace, trusting that our Lord walks with us. So count yourselves blessed, friends, that you have experienced a love that feels just too painful to let go of. And now as we come to the table, may we see how the empty spaces, the not yet spaces of our lives are made full when we truly believe. In the name of God, who was and is and is to come. Amen.